Welcome to Let's Talk. I'm your co-host, Claudine Walk. With us today are Dr. John Murray, Dr. Hilary Schweitzer, and Dr. Zach Haposha. They are not just a chiropractic team, they are all related. Welcome, John, <laughs> Hillary, and Zach. <laughs> you Thank can you. find Hillary, John, and Zach at their website, jmurraychiropracticnj.com, located in Clinton, New Jersey, and they serve Hunterdon, Warren, and the Lehigh Valley in Pennsylvania. So you have something pretty powerful on your website. I'm going to quote it. It says, how you feel physically and emotionally is a direct result of your body's ability to move and adapt. That stagnation in either can fester a state of disease and vice versa movement can lead to wellness. And I think that's pretty powerful. So let's just, let's start the discussion there and you can tell us about your philosophy on that. Okay, well, first of all, we hyphenate the dis disease into dis-ease, a lack of ease in the body, which references a challenge in, in, in what we call adaptability. Um, outside stresses and strains are always working on us, and they might be physical, uh, uh, from within emotional, uh, chemical, and they all place a drain on our capacity so what chiropractic helps people do is maintain their capacity for living and in terms of it's almost like economics you have so much energy in your body and you'd rather have more capacity uh, and so, so that it out, outstrips your demands so what, what we're working to do with our patients is is foster a health from within because ultimately that's where it comes from uh, so uh, in our practice, we, we evaluate people for their spine as it relates to their nerve system, which coordinates all the functions of the body. Okay. Um, okay. And on, on the physical side, I think most people have heard about chiropractic and they have some sort of experience with it either directly or somebody they know have, has gotten um, an adjustment. I don't know if that's still the proper term, but that's the term. Yeah, at least is. in our office. <laughs> okay, good. Um, so tell us on the physical side first, what can chiropractic relieve in terms of the body? Most people, I would say, look at chiropractic from the standpoint of alleviating musculoskeletal back ache, crick and strain kind of things. Back ache, you know, we get a lot of people with radiating pain from spinal stenosis, disc herniations, things like this pain radiating in their back, their arms, their legs, into the head, different things like that. So it's, people mostly look at it from a back ache, crick and strain kind of thing, but the same nerves that go outside go inside and can compromise internal function as well. You just don't feel your insides going bad as, as, as uh, readily as your, as your outside. We're not wired for that. You don't have pain thresholds in that area that are that are similar to back ache, crick and strain kind of stuff but by activating motion in the spine you set into into process a constructive cascade of physical and neurological uh function which just brings better adaptability to the body um you can get the most simple thing is the brain and body communicate to one another your brain needs your body as much as your body needs your brain and when you start moving and getting your joints of your spine moving properly and freeing up nerve pressure the brain can better hear what the body needs and then the brain then like the conductor of a symphony can organize all the parts more, so are, more clearly. are you saying let's say you have an issue with back pain that back pain is causing some kind of a blockage so that your brain you know, you're, it can't, whatever your messages are, they're not getting through that blockage? Right, well, and it happens on the sensory side first. On the input side, the brain gets a blurred image of what the body needs in the moment to adapt you in the moment. If you're sitting there watching Hallmark Hall of Fame Christmas show, and, and your heart rate goes- Who doesn't, to, right? And who, well, <laughs> me, but anyway, uh, but anyway, you go to 220 heart rate, I doubt if it should, that's probably tachycardia. Now, if you take a sprint around the track or climb a flight of steps, your heart rate should elevate. That's the proper adaptive response to that demand in the moment. So that incongruency and adaptability based on nerve interference is what we work with. 
you want to have a clear adaptive response to the moment that you're living in, in your environment. In the stressed out environment that's going on today, people are in a hyper stressed out mode. And we call that sympathetic dominance, the, the autonomic nerve system. And it's, we call it an adrenergic stress and adrenal stress. And it's real. And it, it's like having a loose ground wire on your battery. It drains your system and your capacity over time. So what we do, if we can keep people, the nerve system clear through the adjustment, and you put a reasonably good diet into the system, get some rest, think some positive thoughts, you're going to be stronger. You have the potential to be stronger than your stress. So positive thoughts can help your physical health? Without a doubt. You can think a thought and blush. That, that's a vasodilatory response in a split second. Sympathetic response. You can also think other thoughts that shut it all down in a split second. Wow. Oh, boy. Right? Okay. Is that something that you help people with that come? All the time. It's the autonomic nerve system that the, at the root of how we help people is balancing the autonomic nerve system. Not just on pinching a nerve on a, on a segmental or linear level. We do that too, but as a byproduct of, of unpinching a nerve on a segmental level, the broader picture is that you balance the autonomic nerve system, which renders your body. That's what runs the, the show without thinking about it. If okay. you had to think about everything that went on, you can't. Right. Regulate your heartbeat consciously. No, that's the job of your autonomic nerve system. And so that, more than anything, chiropractic balances the autonomic nerve system. That's really where it's at. And right. the, come, the back pain comes along for the ride. Okay. <laughs> All right. So some of the things that you mentioned on the site, back to the physical part of this again, is pinched nerve, frozen shoulder, TMJ, sinus and migraine, and sciatica. So the, what is frozen shoulder? Because I think I have it. Why don't, you, why don't you take that one, Zach? And what is one of those fundamentals that, and it's usually not just the shoulder. Right. Well, it could be a combination of things. And I think when you look at our office and look at other chiropractic offices is, you know, we have a very um, large funnel of analysis is what we like to say, or a broad scope of techniques, but it could be from a number of things. I mean, a frozen shoulder would be the lack of motion in the shoulder, lack of range of motion, but it could be coming from the cervical spine. It could be even... Uh, could also be coming from, you know, SI joint instability and how the muscles. Sacroiliac joint, low yes. back. Yeah, uh, low back, sacroiliac joints, and how like the fascia of the muscles coincide, and that's why you're getting referred pain to the shoulder. I was just explaining to somebody today who thought that, you know, the shoulder pain or that frozen shoulder where they, where they can't get the um, proper range of motion that they want, and he thought it was all cervical spine, which it was some cervical spine, but also some hypermobility in his sacroiliac joints. And, and the, and the key thing is the shoulder is actually four joints. You have where the collarbone meets your breastbone. You have where the collarbone meets your shoulder blade. That's your acromioclavicular joint. You have the upper arm where the, the, the ball meets the socket formed by the shoulder blade. It's called the glenohumeral joint. And then you have actually how the shoulder blade glides on your rib cage. There's a rhythm of motion for all these things. And so everything, you know, we, get, we don't just treat the symptom. We look at underlying cause. That's the key. You know, you could have a frozen shoulder and it, it definitely could be coming from somewhere else, or maybe it's just from the shoulder. But seldom is it the ball in the socket. It's usually the other joints that affect it. Uh, okay. So it's interesting. Under, underlying all of it is the nerve system, again, coordinating all of this. So joint dysfunction affects neurologic function, and neurologic right. function will affect joint function. And so chiropractic isn't something that you normally think of that will cure a migraine. No, and right, go ahead. Hill. Yeah, we have um, a couple different techniques that, or all of our techniques have to do with cervical spine, but also the top two bones in the neck, the atlas, and um, axis. axis. Yeah. Um, those two correlate. So oftentimes when the, those top two bones are um, spinal cord come through the skull and then the first one bones they meet are the atlas and axis. And we have flare up or cervical technique. Also in combination, we use Cox technique. So a form of decompression as well as the Blair technique aligns the top two bones in the neck. So when those are rotated, those can um, cause interference, which migraines or any headaches, um, brainstem, pressure. brainstem pressure correlate. So taking care of cervical spine can help with migraines. And there's tons of research on cervicogenic headaches coming from disc degeneration in the mid to lower portion of the neck. 
which is rampant. We're seeing more and more degeneration in people at a younger age now, whether it's from all the devices they use. People will say to me, oh, you know, arthritis runs in my family or tight shoulders runs in my family. And I say, well, you and 8.5 billion other homo <laughs> That's the family we're talking about. It's in our genetic code to manifest these issues, but it's not caused by a gene. It's a lifestyle affecting gene expression. Mm -hmm. That's genetics. So you have to look at, well, mm -hmm. what's caused by a disease or a problem caused by the presence of a gene and what is caused by lifestyle. Most of them are caused by lifestyle. But a lot of cervicogenic headaches come from the mid to lower cervical spine also. Cox Technique, there's tons of research on this stuff. And activating motion greases the rails of function and better health. It just does. If you are stagnant, you will tend to lose. You put somebody in a hospital for three weeks in a bed, yeah, the obvious thing is their muscles atrophy, but so do their organs, so does their brain. Mm -hmm. Part of your brain called the hippocampus atrophies if you don't move. So we, we're not that smart. I say it all the time. <laughs> you know, you can, <laughs> you don't even have to come to me when I tell you I had a 2.86 grade point average in college. That's because I knew what to study and what to let go. <laughs> I'm not going to waste all my energy. But anyway, so the deal is your body's like spaghetti sauce. All the ingredients are there for health. You just got to stir it up. You just got to stir it up a little bit gotcha. and do it the right way. And we do not just practice the, the form of force application in an adjustment form of twisting, popping, cracking. We, we go low force. We, we are all about the right thing for the right person. So anyway, yes, headaches can come from the spine. <laughs> <laughs> this is fascinating. Okay, so we had a guest on and she was, I thought she was 80 years old, but she was actually 90 years old and she still practices yoga and she was one of the first hatha um and i know i'm saying that improperly but um yoga teachers and uh, she talked on i've taken her class and she talked all the time about how you have to move you're you were you're going to be toxic if you don't move is that are you saying the same thing well for sure you're going to be toxic you know your lymphatic system gets stagnant if you're dehydrated and you don't move. Big problem with the COVID situation today yes. is static. Huge. Uh, that's a whole, wow, we could have another great discussion. <laughs> I'd on. love to have that discussion. Yep. But anyway, life is motion. That's been our motto since 1980 when I started my practice. Life is motion. Not only on a macroscopic level, but on a cellular level, on a molecular level. That's how deep it goes. You're only as healthy as your cells are healthy. And your cell's health depends on all the systems of your body working in harmony. And it begins with the assimilation of nutrients and excretion of metabolic waste. If you're not doing those first two things in your body, you're going to be sick. Motion helps drive that. It really, truly does. You know, people, after you have a nice dinner, you take a walk, don't you feel like you digest your food better and things yep. like that? Yep. I mean, you don't want to run 400 meter dashes because the blood will be shunted from your gut to your legs and you'll get cramps, right? But there's a nice balance of movement after dinner that facilitates digestion. Right, and, right. And so you're, that woman is right on, no doubt. It's these sages we have to listen to, not the come and grow, go fad stuff that's going on today, Tahitian noni juice and, uh, you know, whatever. I, <laughs> <laughs> it's good old-fashioned move, movement. Move and eat a basic good diet. Void of sugar is the big thing. Get rid of sugar and drink water. Yes. And, you know, it's okay in balance. And I notice I never use moderation. I don't because use the term moderation. Because it's not good at all. Right. Certain things you never want to do, ever. And there's certain things you always want to keep in your uh, repertoire. Right. And I say to people, go do heroin on a moderate level. You Go ahead. It ain't happening. <laughs> Once the receptor sites get filled with that, tobacco, nicotine, chocolate is not going to cut it. They all go to the same receptor sites. Well, how about, how about the, mo the popular one these days, the, um, the pot, which the kids don't call the pot anymore. They laugh when you hear, they hear pot. But is that good for you? I mean, that can't be good for you. Well, no, it can suck your motivation. Anything in, out of balance, I, I don't think that it's a cure-all for everything. I'll right. be honest with you. Right. It goes to receptor sites in the brain, the, those cannabinoid receptor sites in the brain, which are, it doesn't have the same impact as, as messing with the, the, the uh, opiate receptor sites. By the way, who were discovered by a wonderful woman named Candace Pert, 
1970. She discovered the opiate receptors, got her PhD at Johns Ho John Hopkins. What a wonderful woman. But anyway, yeah, you can't do things in moderation. So if you do things in balance, there are things you'll never do. Right. I'll never have cocoa puffs for breakfast. Right. No. But people do it every day. Exactly. Exactly. No, it's good. It, well, and the <laughs> other thing too, you know, some, we had a nutritionist on and she, she said people are starving themselves. They don't even realize that they're not eating food. They're not eating actual food. And because of that, they are starving themselves. And I had, had never heard of that before, but it made a lot of sense. And I'll go one step further. They're depleting themselves too. They're sucking from their body too. So she's totally right on. And, and we're all on the same page. You know, people who look at health from a vitalistic standpoint, we're on the same page. And we, we always stress to our patients, if I can't help you, we'll get you to someone who can, or in symphony, we'll work with them. We always, I'm not here to replace allopathic medicine at all, but we want to give people a choice. Yes. Um, I'm not here to replace it, but nor I here to, to um, mimic it either. We are, there's great physicians, but the key thing is, is we're all on the same page. And, I, and most allopathic physicians, they want you to eat good. They'd rather not see you on medication all the time. Right. And, and, and in our country, would you like to know the AARP statistics on <laughs> prescription medication in sure. our country? The average American over 50 takes 3.55 different prescription medications. Wow. The average American over 60, which is my demographic, takes 4.55 different prescription medications. If you're over 72, you're down to 4.42 for whatever reason. So if I take none and I take none, there's some guy taking nine. Right. And there's no way a physician can, the exponential confusion in the body. So, you know, we, less is better with medication, but it's got to be a lifestyle you have right. to maintain. We promote as well. Right. And the irony is you actually feel better. It's just getting past the bad habits to get you to that point. That's a fantastic point. That's a, that's a tremendous point. It takes commitment. It takes a leap of faith, especially when you're going through the, let's say, sugar withdrawal. I mean, it's 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 a withdrawal. It's right. a, and, and because it's a hormonal deal, and uh, it it's not easy. It's not easy. Uh, and people people get, view it as a punishment. Right. You're right. I, I view it as a punishment uh, that I that I don't feel well. You know. I, I mean, I. But I agree. You nailed. You. This is gonna. I hope this reaches some people because you're touching on some great points. Oh, thanks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's. So we're speaking with Dr. John Murray, Dr. Hilary Schweitzer, and Dr. Zach Haposia. They own a chiropractic practice, and they you can be find them at J Murray M U R R A Y Chiropractic New Jersey N J dot com. So to get back to the chiropractic real quick. For people who, who really have never visited one, and I, I include myself in that category, but I will be seeing you guys soon. <laughs> how do the treatments work? Walk me through, I'm a first-time patient, and here's how it's going to go. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, well, well, basically, you're going to do the standard stuff of, of what you, when you go to any physician's office. Um, you're going to do some paperwork. You can get it online, or you can get it here, but you paperwork. HIPAA, we kill a few trees around here, I hate to say, with, with the paperwork. But you fill out your forms, and then we take a complete history of what's going on in, in your life. Uh, you'll be interviewed. Uh, you'll check off things, too, where, where your symptoms are and different things. Because let's face it, even though our goal is to optimize your, your potential as a human being, part of that lies in helping you feel better. So we need to know, knowing where you feel crappy, it gives you a chance to get it out of your system. You, people want to tell people where they feel bad. That doesn't always mean that's the problem, but anyway, so they're going to fill out a haste history. We'll interview an them. Exam. Then the doctor will come in and do an exam. And our exam is very um, dynamic in that uh, there are some ortho standard orthopedic and neurological tests that are involved, but a lot of it is just looking how the body and brain communicate with each other to find interference. And uh, we do tests uh, standing on one leg, and then doing a, a test, uh, finding an, a strong indicator muscle and standing on one leg, if the muscle gets spongy or weak, that's indicating that there's an issue in communication from the lower body back to the brain, and we'll investigate that further. It's all about us listening to the body of the patient, I would say, is the key thing. Because I always say the body, your body's way smarter than me. And based on our funnel of analysis, and we use the, the context of our, of our technique parameters, 
we're going to investigate and see where your body has its problems. Your body will show us where the problems are. We're not going to make them up. We're going to, the problems are where they are. And we'll look at you as a whole person. Even if you have headaches or neck pain, we're still going to look at your pelvis, your ankle, your knee, if, if that might be an issue. So after we do that, then there's going to be imaging, very oftentimes imaging, x-ray. Some techniques are more imaging dependent than others, like Blair upper cervical technique. You really can't practice it without x-ray because it's very specific in that we're designing a, an adjustment based on your exact structural formation. It's so it gets complicated. Cox technique, not as much. Other techniques, I would say. But I would say we x-ray probably 75% of our new patients. There are patients who get referred to us with other imaging, and um, with Cox technique, we can uh, use MRIs and things. So if you have them, bring them. Bring any imaging you have. We always say, if you have it, bring it, and uh, we'll look at it and see what we need to do. And we are in a rare kind of, so we would, we would draw our diagnostic conclusion from exam, imaging, palpation, all, all these things go together. We do like to help someone get relief on the first visit. Most, chiro most chiropractors we find through management are taught to have them come back after you've put everything together. But I'll tell you what, we know what to do. It doesn't take that long. It's not, you know, you do this for a while, you know what you gotta do. So we like to help people get relief on the first visit, if we can, or at least initiate the care so they can move down the path towards relief. Yeah, the first visit's usually about an hour, but then after that, it's no more than like 15 minutes for an adjustment time. Yeah, and you know, and I admit we're busy and we don't just cookie cutter what we do. So, so it is a little more involved than the average office maybe. But so we like to adjust first visit because I think people, they want that too. But it's what we do because we, we know what to do first visit. I don't right. need to debate about it for another two days <laughs> while this guy's leg's on fire. You know? Absolutely. And, and are you covered by insurance? Yes, we are. We are a Blue Cross Blue Shield tier one providers. We accept all insurance. We don't participate in all of them. We are Medicare providers, but a lot of times people have a network to just do great. And if there's hardship, we work it out with people. We will never turn anyone away, never. That's really good to know as well. I have seen a treatment once uh, years ago. I went to, and I can tell you're all very scared right now. Oh my gosh, she <laughs> saw one. What did that look like? There's um, a lot of stuff out there. There's a lot of stories. Yeah. So, oh, good. Okay. I'm so, embarrassed was, sometimes. I'm, I'll be honest. <laughs> I'm sorry, I missed that. Say again. Bear it sometimes for what I see on the internet to pick things up. Yeah, I, I, this was years ago. My roommate from college had taken me up to Erie with her family, and they had a doctor in the family, and he just, he uh, just kind of threw her on the couch and started doing her adjustment. I'm like, oh my gosh, what is that? That scared me. Um, but she felt so much better after, and then yeah. I was fascinated. So, mm -hmm. if someone were to see it, would they be afraid and think, "Oh my gosh, is this really working?" Or could I possibly get hurt? Is really the, well, the point. Well, what do you think, Zach? I mean, you know, I think it's all contextual. If this was a relative who adjusted another relative, you're correct. Yeah, so he maybe he was familiar with her case and and so on and so forth and things like that. Or your rugby adjustments on the side. <laughs> we adjusted guys on the side of the field, but we knew each other. We adjusted yeah. each other before you took a knee to the head. Right. Uh, <laughs> but as a new patient, we would never just lay you on the table and go to town. Right. Because you have to meet your, we have to meet your physical needs within the context of emotional needs. There are people who are gentle, sp gentler spirits who don't like a physical type adjustment. And it's not the little old lady. It could be the big truck driver guy. I get the little old ladies and like, is that all you got? I'm like, yeah, that's all I got, Mary. And we don't want to break your hands. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's it's all force appropriate. But if people don't like, from an emotional standpoint, a cracking kind of adjustment, that's no problem. We can get the jo job done without it, you know, with with the tools we have. Instruments. With the tools we have. Okay. But there are people, there are things on the internet where they're using a strap and they give a guy a big yank on his neck. In fact, we have a guy coming in, right, uh, who was hurt from one of those things. Now, I'm not knocking it. People do it. But there is a greater risk with that. There's a risk-benefit ratio with everything you do in life. Yes. You know, three-foot surf is less risky than me being an idiot at Hurricane Floyd. So anyway, <laughs> 10, 12 foot surf, yeah. But anyway, risk benefit ratio has to be considered in everything we do. We want optimal benefit 
minimal risk, whether that's with a workout, whether that's with an adjustment, but I hope that makes sense. But no, it can be scary. I mean, and there, you know, it can be scary. There are certain types of techniques we would never do to certain people in a certain demographic. Well, and you always say it's a leap of faith too. So they're coming in trusting us. Yeah. And we always communicate and explain everything as well, especially first visit. We won't do anything with surprise you. We will yeah. explain exactly what we're doing. Someone new to chiropractic, you're right, Hillary. It is a leap of faith. They're thinking outside of a different box and you got to give them credit. And um, yeah, and we appreciate that in people. And we appreciate the people who send trust us enough that they send their loved ones to us. You know? right. So I don't want to get off on track. So ask, I don't want to interrupt your questions. <laughs> no, that's okay. I'm, I'm reviewing my questions and I'm, I'm, re I'm realizing that we answered a lot of them, which is terrific. If someone does come and, and sees you and has that initial consultation and obviously is going to experience some relief right away. Is well, this hope. Not yes. always, but. Is this something that they're definitely going to come back to? So once you're adjusted, do you have to keep coming back to get adjusted? Well, well, you know how I answer that one. Yes. You want me to do it? Or you... Go ahead. Okay. Well, you don't ever have to do anything. You don't have to. So <laughs> once you get adjusted, like people, that's a, a, a common misconception in chiropractic that once you go to a chiropractor, you always have to get adjusted, right? Right. Well, I explain to people that the elements of nature work on my house, my brakes, my the pain on my house, just like the elements of a uh, uh, life, emotional stress, physical stress, chemical stress work on my body. So I have to paint my house every five years. It's just the nature of it. Wind and rain and cold and sleet and expansion, contraction. I, it's not like, what did that damn painter do that I have to go back and get my house painted again? What did that guy at the auto shop do? I need new brakes again? What do, you, what do you mean? So it's not like chiropractic makes you have to get adjusted, but I pose this question. Would you rather have your physiology normalized or balanced by, uh, by natural means that have minimal side effects and a huge upside than artificially augmented by drugs and ultimately surgery in some cases? So I say to yourself, you can serve one of two masters because you get on drugs, you get on them for the rest of your life. There's very few you take for short term, maybe an antibiotic here or there, but they want you on cholesterol stuff the rest of your life. They want you on blood pressure the rest of your life. They want you on an antidepressant the rest of your life. So whatever. So chiropractic would be good to keep your spine and nerve system balanced the rest of your life. Right. From the womb to the tomb, I say. <laughs> I, I adjusted my oldest son, who's 38, with his umbilical cord still attached, laying on his mother. Get the heck out of here. Well, the, the, one of the great, if, there, if birth, giving birth and being born were fun and easy, there'd be a ride at Disney World. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've had so, three children, I'll test to yeah, that. You know, I observed four births, that's enough. So the transition from the womb to the world is not easy. When that baby's, and that, even when it happens under a nice circumstance, and relative, right, normal, but you yeah, know, mom and baby. you go from this 98.6, <laughs> Dim lights, muffled sound, food on demand, bathroom on demand. You go from living in this wonderful little safe haven with the umbilical cord. So now you're that you're shoved out of there, pushed out of there. If it goes lucky, lucky you're not poured out, pulled out with like me with pliers, forceps. Could have been dead. I'd rather have the forceps than not be alive. But that was traumatic. So, and as soon as the baby's born, within a minute or so or less, they sever his lifeline. So you go to dim light, from dim lights to bright lights, from warmth to cold, from muffled sounds to loud sounds. It's, it's traumatic. And now you have to start taking your nutrients through the mouth, assimilating through the gut in a different way, and now you're excreting through your alimentary canal. So this transition from the womb to the world stresses the autonomic nerve system, getting back to that. That's why we see colic babies all the time. The big thing with colic babies, they don't like to poop, usually. Some, and on, and they, a lot of times they'll be spitting up a lot too. So assimilating and excreting is a lot of issues with colic babies. I guarantee a full diaper by the time you hit the Route 31, which is a mile away from my house. Oh, where were you? And I had my son. <laughs> I'm telling you. 27 years ago. Yeah. You know, the up the side, out the back kind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because I, I did see that a lot with him. The little guy used to, I remember this. I mean, everybody who has a colic baby remembers it, but the, his legs would come up and he would be clenching and in so much yeah. pain. And yeah. So that's what it is. We're balancing the autonomics. But the baby is so pure. The baby is only hours long, long alive. And, and his system is so available for this constructive input of force that they respond so rapidly. 
Right. It's not like I was 80. I got a guy who's 88. He goes, I've come twice. You know, how come I'm not better? I'm like, look, Bob, you should have came when you're 18. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm all what you brought me now. Okay. Right. <laughs> Jesus had healing events. We as mere mortals are stuck with healing process. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It's a process. It, but with yeah. babies, it has to be real fast. And that was one of the things I wanted to ask you. You mentioned it earlier, and I want to come back to it. The connection between the physical and the emotional. I imagine right. that the, probably the three of you feel that you're mini psycho psychiatrists as well, or psychologists. How important is the connection between both, yeah. identifying what it is emotionally that is affecting someone physically? Yeah, we see a lot of people that just come in, whether it's stress from work or family, relationship, money, basically anything life in general can COVID. be stressful. COVID nowadays, especially too, or people are losing their jobs. So we've had a lot of people that still come in and sometimes they just like, to talk and let it out too, but as along with the adjustment. So we kind of get people in all realms of life in general, that the adjustment then they leave totally relaxed versus when they first came in and the shoulders are up. So the stress response, so the shoulders up to their um, ears, um, totally we see a huge change just when they leave in those 15 minutes and it all starts at, we always say it all starts at the front desk so we love our becky and heather our morning girls and then carly and cameron at night and it all starts with them having a smiling face and just saying hello and then they just feel so good by the time they even come back to see us and get adjusted so it's yeah. like a whole whole I we're guess, not stodgy around yeah <laughs> people love just hanging in well not as much now in the waiting room They're, we keep it smaller but um yeah people just and it all starts when they first walk in the door, get adjusted and leave. And it just makes their day better and stress levels down. And do you know what? And, and again, it gets back to the autonomics. Emotional stress creates what we call a sympathetic response. You know, you can show somebody a picture of a, 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 a spitting cobra. They a lot of times have the same have that emotional response to that of fear. It's no different than them being in the same room with one. And it's imagined. So what it is, it's an adrenergic stress, sympathetic response. So you know, the autonomics has two pathways a throttle upside and a throttle downside the throttle upside is adrenergic or adrenal right adrenal adrenaline stress response you could lift a volkswagen off somebody if you had to right so the problem is when that becomes chronic chronic stress creates chronic disease because that's a drain on your system the parasympathetics which are throttled down is a acetylcholine pathway cholinergic pathway that's recovering. That's like letting the ground lie fallow. So you should, from your set point of existence, homeostasis, your, your functional zone of normalcy, you should be able to ramp it up if you have to, but you've got to come down. Chronic stress is like Adolf's meat tenderizer to your body. Now, you and I might get that analogy, but then nobody else. <laughs> you know, it eats you up. Right. So it's allostatic load. There's homeostasis, but it's a physiologic load that's constant. The adjustment reboots that. It reboots the, gets you out of sympathetic dominance into more parasympathetics. That's, and you can do things to help yourself. The yoga, I do Tai Chi every day. Um, breathing, right. making sure, all these things, but emotional stress is, it's, it's, a, it's, it's not in your head. Right, the head, right. The emotional brain, the limbic system, okay, cranks up the sympathetic response. Right. So, well, That's guys, what happens. You it's not in your head. It's in your body. But it's psychophysiology is what we call it. The right. psychology is affected by your physiology. Right. Well, you start, both of you start your day with positive affirmations, too. So you're starting yep. it by reading um, those positive affirmations. Putting in our heads what we'd like to see, and it gives you a baseline of calm. It polishes your internal mirror, so to speak. So, so we just you, here it is. You just get a beads, 108 beads. There's something about 108 without it getting too metaphysical, but the Buddhist mala has 108 beads. A Catholic rosary minus the three Hail Marys and two Our Fathers. If you go around, it's 54. 54 times two, 108. I don't know. But anyway, you use the beads for counting. It's not changing your religion. So I now, so one of my affirmations might be, I now release and let go of all obstacles and all struggles for attainment. Uh, I, and I now bless all aspects of my life, my practice, my health, my wealth, my family. I like to do affirmations of releasing and blessing. Mm -hmm. They work. I don't want anything given to me. I, I just want to bless things or I would just like to release things to be able to go at my, uh, to where I want to go in life. So, but by the time you count to like bead number 54, you've already shut down your conscious mind, which is judging you all the time, saying you're never good enough. The world, the sky is falling. You know, I'm gonna, the world is coming to an end. 
and you replace that. You shut that monkey brain up and you polish your internal mirror with these positive affirmations. And now when this negativity comes in, you bounce it out mm -hmm. through through the, the polished internal mirror. Now, sarcasm and uh, it doesn't hurt either. But anyway, uh, <laughs> but, uh, that's how it works. And you calm yourself down. Yeah, because I'd I imagine if you're just listening to the news and, and if, you, if you do it all day long and you're, you're, you're getting worked up all day long, are you saying that that, that, bad, that bad adrenaline yeah. you're at that level all day? Yeah. You're giving it nowhere to go. Right. You're giving it nowhere to go and it just percolates into hypertension. What's hypertension? Chronic stress, chronic androgenergic, chronic adrenal function. Right. So what do they give you when you have hypertension, which is high blood pressure? They give you a cholinergic drug. Right. So actually, they give you what you have already, and that's your parasympathetic nerve system, a cholinergic pathway. They give you a cholinergic medication. Right. If you're lethargic, they give you an adrenergic medication. Basically, all the medications, aside from antiviral, antibacterial, are cholinergic drugs to, to mellow you out or adrenergic to crank you up. You are, wow. They're drug mimicking what you already have in your autonomic nerve system. That's why I say... We unpinch a nerve on a segmental level, but overall, the whole the holistic picture, and everybody wants to say they're holistic, but chiropractic is the original holistic in a lot of ways, modern holistic. You know, I get a lot of stuff, you know, I, I, I know crystals are good and all that, but I tell you, having my atlas set, massage is great, and I get one regularly. It's wonderful, but they don't have the depth of impact on your nerve system that an adjustment does, and I'll discuss that with anybody. Yeah, and I think you're right. You can get them. I love massages as well. Um, haven't had one lately, but uh, well, I'm sorry. It's relaxing. It mellows you out. Yes. It's cholinergic. You, you yes. Chill. I can't take deep tissue. For me, I'm all gristle at 63. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys can actually tell someone if something's out of alignment and where and what you need to do. Do you send your patients away with exercises that they can do on first, their own? Yeah, great question. First visit, I give every one of my new patients, after I ask them if they're allergic to latex or not, I give them a, a, a couple of exercise bands and we have a list of exercises that refers them to our website and they can go on our website and look at, there's three exercises basically that you do with the bands. And one is the gorilla hand of gravity, which are variations on pulling exercises for your upper back, because gravity is like a big gorilla hand that wants to pull your chin to your knees. The other is the wheelbarrow exercise, just like picking up a wheelbarrow. It's essentially a, a deadlift with bands. Strength training has been a part of my life for 45 years. So, and then three exercises for lower body strength done in sequence. If they do those exercises and maybe add a calf raise, they'll work their whole body. And not only will they create a situation where their muscles are going to get stronger. They're going to move lymph. They're going to give that adrenal stress somewhere to go. You know, it doesn't become pent up and become a dis-ease. That's the getting back to that, okay? Yes. So it's about balance again. It's about balance. And you don't, Tai Chi. And, I, and we have Tai Chi. Um, tai Chi warm-up stretching and spinal Qigong is on my website. I do Tai Chi one stretching and Qigong every day. I've been fortunate enough to train with a man named David Grantham. He taught for many years at the at the Hundred and Wellness Center. Still does, but he's brilliant. Tai Chi changed my life. I got into it about twelve years ago. It's been very good. Yoga's great. They're not the same. No. Uh, they're very much different, but they accomplish similar things if you pro practice them consistently. Neat. Uh, so you so got to do. Yes. So let me ask you, um, I don't want to run out of time here before I bring up the fact that I mentioned in, as we started the show that you're all related. So yeah. let's, let's tell the audience how exactly you're related and how it came to be that you're working together. Okay. So my dad is Dr. John Murray. <laughs> um, I'm, I have three other siblings, so I'm, only, I'm the one of the four of us that became a chiropractor. I went to Moravian College. I was actually going to become a teacher, and then I realized I wanted to follow in my dad's footsteps and become a chiropractor. So we all went to Davenport, Iowa, uh, Palmer College of Chiropractic. Played I'm basketball Davenport. four years, four-year starter at Moravian. Yes, North nice. Hall. Yes, and then um, and Dr. Zach Kaposia, he has been dating my sister since high school, and they just got married in October. So now we're officially brother-in-law and my dad's son-in-law so we're all a part of the family division one soccer player at george mason yeah nice uh, we got a proud so, papa here proud yeah. Papa -in -law. yeah no, zach's a great young man i can't i couldn't you know 
I wouldn't have, I, I love Zach, but if he were a crappy chiropractor, he wouldn't be here. Yeah. As much as I love him. Yeah. That's great. So Z did, did Zach decide to become a chiropractor after he met your family? Correct. Yeah. That was wow. story, Zach. Yeah. So I went to George Mason and thought I wanted to be um, a physical therapist, but went through the whole apprenticeship or uh, preceptorship type of thing. And it just had a click. And then, but John had been adjusting me since I was a sophomore in high school. And for some reason, I, you know, or another, but then I went and shadowed him and he- You finished your prerequisites. I yeah. was George Mason uh, faculty. Right. Right. Hey, and, well, uh, I want some credit. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and then it just clicked. And then I went out and uh, to Davenport and the rest is history, I guess. Yeah. But yeah, John, John has been a major, you know, influence and mentor for me. And, you know, Hillary as well, because she finished before me, but it's been, it's been um, a great, you know, experience here. And John, John's really, you know, the best, because before even I graduated, he said, go and visit as many chiropractors as you can, and uh, see what you like, and see what you don't like, and see what vibes with you, and see what doesn't vibe with you. And, you know, I've been to a bunch, and I, you know, I can honestly say that if you're going to come to a chiropractor, this is the best place to be. Even if you see me or not see me, or, you know, if you see Hillary or see John, I, you know, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're all on the same team and, you know, I always say we're all on the same team and that's to get you better and, you know, however we can. And like what John said, if we can't, we'll send you somewhere else or at least work with somebody else. And we always think that no matter what your diagnosis, you can still benefit from a clear nerve system. We've taken, this might sound odd, but you, through adjusting people, you can almost, you, I've seen it a number of times in my practice where you, you actually ease a person out of living the transition from life to the other realm. Hmm. It did work in that method too. But for me, I have no plans for college. You're probably done. You need to sign off. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Keep going. You're good. Me, I had no plans for college. I got out of high school, no plans for college, nothing. I was going to join the Marines at the end of the summer of 75. And, uh, but I got adjusted by my, uh, a relative of mine. One adjustment, it wasn't an educated decision. I, it's what I felt. And in that moment, I decided to, to do this. The vitalistic philosophy agreed with me. And within two weeks, I was at a large seminar in Georgia, not knowing what they're talking about, but it resonated with me. And uh, so, yeah, five years later, started playing rugby at Palmer College and all that stuff. So here I am, you know, 40, 40 years graduated. So. And what's awesome, too, is it's a home office. So it's, our, it's gone through a few additions, our home, but you, he, he always wanted a home office. And so I, would, I grew up coming down to the basement, which, which our whole basement is, is our practice. So as kids, we would be running around yeah. the office. So I got to really see firsthand him helping people at a really young age. And so I always knew I wanted to be one, but it just took a little longer to switch in college. But well, we're glad you did. But yeah, the home. Yeah. yeah. So we all see each other, and and it is really awesome to be a part of it. And the home still, and my dad and mom still live upstairs. So and we <laughs> get a great lunch every day. Yeah, my mom Shout makes them a great Diane. lunch. Yeah, Shout Mama D, Diane. she she makes the best <laughs> the best food, home cooked meals every day. Nice, nice. So Hillary, are 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 you the favorite? <laughs> she's she's the female version of me yeah I would say. we're literally the same person so we we get along wonderfully but i'll roll my eyes here and there at him but i love it. but she's constantly telling me to shut up and get moving uh -uh. I like to no we no we have a great relationship we're definitely the closest probably yeah. <laughs> we have have had other family businesses on and i'm wondering if you could share the the trick with that in in because obviously you know there's going to be times that you have disagreements and do you have any tips or tricks to share in maintaining a family business well, you know, <laughs> zach what happened there no okay they gave them attitude how to practice how they want within certain yeah. parameters you know i mean and they knew what those were you know and basically well, it's we just learned stick. we learned from the best too so we learned all of what he's done and um, well, i've been that my kids have been around uh, good friends of mine freddie schofield a south african buddy of mine i played rugby with we have a similar, we, I think our philosophical foundation is the same. And I think that's important to have a philosophical foundation that is the same, that can be expressed through your technique. And so we practice the same techniques. I made sure that we, they were certified in the techniques that I've done. In fact, Hillary and I, in order to create a situation where we could be on even footing right away, we started incorporating Cox technique when she first started in practice because I was not certified in this work and I found it to be incredibly beneficial, cutting edge stuff. 
So we got certified at the same time. So we're on the same learning plane as we implemented Cox technique in our office. And people with spinal stenosis, degenerative joint disease, if you're facing surgery, if you're facing, if you've been told you need surgery in your spine, please give us a call. We would love to give you the opportunity to experience Cox technique. I, it, it's all about choice. But anyway, tips for that? I mean, just be honest. I mean, we're still, we're still, you know, how much longer am I going? Probably another 10 years, but all these transitional times. But I think the biggest challenge when you go second generation is maintaining quality. Because a lot of times that falters in the second generation. You look at these wineries in Italy that are 500 years family run and they still thrive. How does that, that's not easy. So sometimes after the, you know, I'm the driver behind this thing. I got to feed a family, but they're just as motivated as I was. So that's the key. You have to be motivated to serve people. And right. I think that makes everything transcend, but it's not easy. I just listen to Hillary. I shut up. <laughs> she's, she's an alpha female. I don't get mad at me. People like, did I say something wrong? No. Uh, she's an alpha female and I'm not nothing wrong. I can, I can deal with the matriarchal energy. No problem. <laughs> um, but, no, it's we have uh, our different zones in the office too. Yeah. So it's we have our own space adjusting rooms and spaces. We're not always so, running into Yeah, them. we're not running into each other. Some patients will only see Dr. Zach or Dr. John or myself. We also have a lot of patients that kind of see all of us. It just so it's where their it, energy it is, where their vibe is. Yeah. yeah. And uh the key thing is they're free to practice how they want to practice. We're not gonna do blood transfusions or anything, but you know, <laughs> but um no, that that gives them. They have to feel that it's theirs too, you know. And do we have to? Do we change? I guess, are we not going to change it from Murray Chiropractic? Right? No, no, it's always, it's that. no, it's always going to. Yeah, I think that that's a brand, really. But <laughs> yes. But I, I don't know. The hardest part is maintaining that continuity of quality. I think when you bring in other family members, because yep. there might be people who aren't as motivated. Sometimes some people want to suck off the system and yep. and go on your coattails. And and I've always said, you know, I'm only as good as the last my last day. I'm only as good as the last patient I adjusted. And to take a little line from Jerry Garcia, when life looks like easy street, there's Jerry, danger at your door. I like a little edge to things. I like to, I'm not certain that my success is assured. So I have to maintain my edge. You know, I'm just as fired up now as I was when I was 17. That's great. And That's great advice. Feel, you know, you got to just do what stokes you. What gives you stoke? And for me, it's giving people a choice in life. And that's what chiropractic did for me in 1975. It gave me a choice. That's my stoke. It gave me a choice in life. And that's all we want to provide for these people. These people, these wonderful people that come to our office is a choice. You stay as long as you want. Your two visits, that's all you want. No problem. But if you need us again, we're available. Some, some people want to do a lifetime of care. I never go in expecting someone's going to do, want to do lifetime care. If people get the chiropractic philosophy as well as I got it, they'd all become chiropractors and we'd be out of work. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. But do you find that you each have specialties? I think I noticed on the site that there were certain techniques that you each are known for. Yeah, I, I more so gravitate towards the Cox technique. So, um, but we, we do all of them. But She's, yeah, we do, I, I definitely, we do all of them, but I definitely really love doing the Cox technique. So anyone with... Um, neck pain or radiating arm pain or so any sciatica, disc herniation, disc bulges, stenosis. I see a lot of those people and that could be all different ages, but we also do children. Um, but and I love that one. Too. In yeah. Instrument adjusting. Yeah. But you, and you got a great pair of hands for Cox technique. When she, yeah. when she gets a hold of your spine, it's very gentle, but you know that this doctor is in charge. <laughs> You just know you're going to feel confidence as a patient with Zach too. The, the, the way they palpate, the way they they're confident. They're athletes. Like they're you, used to they're used to pressure. Right. They're used to performing. But you yep. do all of them. I do every yeah. technique. <laughs> I got techniques I that yeah. like, oh jeez, I forgot about We're that. Like, we didn't learn that at school. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a lot of stuff that um, I just got in the memory banks and then so doing this so long, it's I can survey the landscape of a person's body pretty quick and come up through through that. I infer, I cut the state police aren't allowed to profile, but I can. The, but the profiling has to be borne out by objective uh, data, findings. But I can funnel my analysis down pretty quick and make the right decision. That, and that's what it's all Dr. about. Zach. And Dr. Zach, he does it all. Yeah. 
yeah. we all do it all but yeah. and some you just love or what is your favorite what's your what do you like that you you like i think it depends on the person yeah it's like i mean too. you like them all i mean maybe some more than others but yeah. it, it doesn't matter and when you, it comes down to what the person yeah. has going on and you got to do what agrees with them emotionally right. and physically and that's what right. makes it easy we mm -hmm. we don't have any technique barriers to the emotional demands of a patient right there you know you don't like you don't like the you don't like popping cracking okay i heard one chiropractor advertise a non force technique and i'm like well i don't get that from a physics standpoint i mean and even telepathy i think there's force required yeah. but anyway <laughs> but uh, there is force environment involved in every adjustment it's got to be constructive and attenuated to what the patient can accept mm -hmm. right yeah uh, I'm wondering, I think it would be great to have you come back. Um, something tells me that you wouldn't mind talking more about the mind-body connection and maybe nutrition oh, yeah. as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We can that definitely talk on great. nutrition. <laughs> and one thing on COVID, here's the deal. Chronic inflammation creates chronic disease. And you're seeing all these people with these, these crazy with cytokines. That's the term, cytokine storms. The cytokines are pro-inflammatory compounds produced by an irritated area in the body. Well, a lot of the baseline, you need to have a baseline of less inflammation in your body. Everybody needs to be taking omega-3 fish oil. I don't care if you're a vegetarian, I'm going to upset some people, because a vegetarian form of omega-3 fat is an 18 chain. We require 24. And the omega-3 fats are precursors or, body or, or building blocks for hormones that lower inflammation, promote vasodilation, and make your blood slip and slide like mobile one oil. The other side of the coin is omega-6 and 9s, and they form the complementary hormones. It's just that with the standard American diet, we're 20 to 1 pro-inflammatory omega-6 and 9s to omega-3 fats. You can get it in a vegetarian form, but it's very inefficient. We require a 24-chain uh, uh, fatty acid. Alpha-linoleic acid is the omega-3 fat that's vegetarian. You know, in a tablespoon of flaxseed oil, you get 3,000 milligrams of that. But because of the conversion process in the liver, two-step, you only get a 10% return on your investment. You only get 300 milligrams of EPA, eicosapentaenoic acid, which affects the inflammation. So vegetarians are deficient in that. they got to get on it. And so omega-3 fats, antioxidants, get on your vitamin C. Indeed. There is no one thing for your immune system. It's everything coming together, all your systems together. And they hear a lot about these athletes. Oh, he was a marathon runner. He was a real good athlete, and he got sick and died from COVID, right? You hear that. You've heard that once or twice. How could that happen? This disease is so bad. No, two words, oxidative stress. We talk about that from a nutritional standpoint. You can be very fit but not healthy. Right. The yes. difference. Olympic athletes get sick after the Olympics. Right. Because they peak such a narrow bandwidth of physical expression. Yes. So you rob from Peter to pay Paul. Yeah, I'm wondering if um, you can package together those um, the vitamins that you just mentioned. I'm so bad. I mean, it'd be great to have like a little basket. Here they are. Take them away. But but well, you're the, saying yeah, there's just certain things, and what we're boiling down to: what does every Homo sapien need? It's it's that. It's what do what do we all need as Homo sapiens? You know, it's not what works for me and what works for you. No, there's certain things that every Homo sapien needs. Right. First of all, we need life itself. Then you need air. That's the, you got two minutes without air. Then you need water a week, maybe without water. Then you need your macro and micronutrients, your protein and fats. And then you need your minerals. You get, you know, you need those. Then movement. Movement is a nutrient. And then your thoughts, you can throw those in. But, right. but basically, we'll package those nutrients, the, the physical, structural nutrients for you. And basically, omega-3 fats are one of the biggest things. People complain about the aftertaste on the- uh, Well, you have good stuff. If you buy like some things like Pantry Pride and and all of them are not created equal. So here's the thing. What you want in, in your food intake, your dietary intake, you want to have purity of what you're consuming and you want to have sufficiency. You want to be sufficient in what you need as a homo sapien and it's got to come in a pure state. You want to avoid uh, deficiency and toxicity, okay? That's what you want to avoid. Uh, you don't want the fish oil yeah. to be fishy. Yeah, if it's, if it's, if it's fish ta fishy tasting, it was prepared in an oxidated or rancid state. Yeah. If you had fishy, if you had a nice dinner brought to you and it looked great, but it smelled fishy, you'd send it back. Exactly. So, if so Nordic Naturals is a great brand you can buy at the health food store. We sell in a choice Dr. James Chestnut's product. He's a good guy to Google, Dr. James Chestnut. Why are we so sick? Not a bad place to look. 
Um, but omega-3 fats, every homo sapien needs them. I can, we hand out a study done by the University of Pittsburgh, Department of Neurological Surgery. They got 59% of their chronic discogenic back pain patients off of nine steroidal anti-inflammatories by consuming enough omega-3 fish oil. Wow. wow. So we're, so see what happens, you don't die from it immediately. It's not as drastic, you know, it's a required nutrient, but air is a little bit more, uh, <laughs> you know, immediate, uh, you know, uh, but you, when you are deficient, you will, that deficiency will be expressed somewhere. Yes. And it could be in the form of more, more pain. It could be an over-exaggerated immune response, like with the COVID, these people who go into the cytokine storm, we call it. This is the stuff. I mean, we have the ability to fight this, this virus yep. through our immune system. It affects less than 1% of the population and less than 1% of that 1% die. And, and we're modifying everything because of it. So I just say, let's get, tell people, what do you really need? Right. Well, this is fascinating and we are running out of time. It's fascinating stuff and great information and we'll have to have you back. So I just want to announce again who you all are. We are speaking with Dr. John Murray, Dr. Hilary Schweitzer, and Dr. Zach Haposha. No. Yeah. <laughs> Did I get it? It's Finland. It's Finland. Yeah. It's Finland. Oh my goodness. And um, they are the doctors at the J. Murray Chiropractic Practice. And the website is J. Murray Chiropractic, nj.com. Go visit them. If any of this has uh, touched a nerve, ha <laughs> ha, how's that for a joke? Um, they are located in Clinton, New Jersey and serve Hunterdon, Warren and the Lehigh Valley in Pennsylvania. And I will have information on our Let's Talk Facebook page where people can link directly to you. And thank you so much for all your insights. We've needed it, especially in the new year. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. Have us. a great day. You too. You. Yep. And you are listening to Let's Talk.